Hi, this is Andrew Smith, instructor at Ferris State University and runner of art by smitty.com. This is part three of the asset creation tutorial series regarding Autodesk 123D catch software and our little treasure chest. So let's go into ZBrush and let's import our chest OBJ. I'm going to hit T to enter edit mode and this is the mesh that I want to um, actually bring into a program called Topogun. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to minimize ZBrush and I'm going to minimize ZBrush and pull up Topogun. Uh, Topogun is used for retopologizing meshes. Uh, you could also use Maya's Retopo G, which I don't think is out yet, or 3D Coat, or Max uh, Graphite Modeling Tools. Um, but I've, I've, I'm used to Topo Gun, so that's what we're going to use for this. Grab my OBJ, and it brings my file into scene. After loading my reference, there's a few hotkeys that you need to know in Topo Gun. Uh, one is C for create, and that allows me to create points, like so. Uh, Shift B allows me to connect points. And T allows me to transform or move points. So when I'm retopologizing this mesh, um, notice that the reference mesh is awfully messy. And I can double click an edge to do an edge ring selection. And then I can come over here and hit connect. And it will automatically connect it. Let's go ahead and do that. Down, Move these guys down here. And the whole idea of this is just to kind of get even topology throughout the entire mesh. So that when I subdivide it, uh, it subdivides evenly and the poly paint data is going to be transferred uh, nicely as well. Okay, so those are the hotkeys for Topo Gun, And I'm just going to go ahead and probably speed this process up. Uh, and you can kind of see how I retopologize this. So one thing I like to do uh, in Topo Gun is uh, go to File, uh, Save Scene As, and ch change this to my desktop is Chest. And we'll come in here, actually we'll go back to the desktop and call this Chest underscore Retopo. Enter. And I save all the time in Topo Gun because it crashes quite a bit. Um, another command you might see me using is uh, if I want to delete an edge, I just hit delete and it deletes it for me. So I'm going to get back on with the tutorial and kind of go over uh, topologizing the rest of this mesh. Uh, I'm also going to leave areas like beneath it uh, empty and fill that in in max after I create textures and unwrap this.
Okay, so that's it for uh, the retopo part of, of this mesh. Uh, in TopoGun, if you ever want to see your mesh without the reference, you just say uncheck view reference. And now we can see our nice, nicely retopologized mesh. Uh, this is the mesh we're going to project all of our details on, something we can then generate a, a game-ready mesh for. Uh, much easier than the mesh we had before with a bunch of triangles and, and misplaced polygons and with a much larger poly count. So uh, what this created, I'm going to say, first hit Control S and save it. Then I'm going to say, um, let's see, I'm going to say Save Scene As. I go to my desktop and save this as an OBJ, uh, Chest Retopo, and hit Save. Okay. Next, I can close Topo Gun and call it Roadkill. We'll run it, and we're gonna go File Load, and we're gonna go find that Retopo OBJ. And first thing we're gonna do is say Edge Mode Select, select everything, hit W for Weld, and then we're gonna come around here and double click, um, well let's double click this guy okay and we're gonna hit C for cut and we'll do the same thing on this corner C for cut and we'll go to here textures show stretch and it's unwrapped nicely so let's hit file save do it twice because it likes to crash and not save things sometimes uh, we're gonna open up ZBrush one more time and we're going to move this into our screen and now we can go and say load tool desktop grab our chest um, high poly or chest z tool uh, we'll draw that into our scene okay and next we're going to do is uh, go ahead and import um, the retopode that's been unwrapped and we're going to go to this chest, say subtool, append, and append that retopo mesh. And now with this retopo mesh, we have to do the same thing. So come down here to geometry, turn off smooth, um, subdivide it till it's around 190 million or 1.9 million. Uh, then we're going to come in here with the inflate brush and start inflating some of these corners making sure everything is going to project nicely. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and hit the project all button one, hopefully one last time. But we want to make sure that RGB mode is turned on. Okay, so now with RGB turned on, we can hide the original and we're left with our retopologized mesh with all of the projected information. Uh, for the most part, everything looks pretty good, um, besides these guys down here, uh, but we're not really going to worry about that right now. Uh, everything else, for the most part, looks pretty good. And if I hit Shift D a few times, I can go down to my lowest subdivision level and view the wireframe. 
and now what we can do is we can come in here and go back up turn off wireframe and we can actually save this texture map out um, it, how we unwrapped it before so let's go ahead and do that okay so coming down here to texture map first we go to UV map and make sure we're at 2048 which is good border of 4 is fine uh, and let's say new from polypaint and that's going to capture all that detail down into a texture map um, we have to hit clone texture and now we can go over here to texture and say export to our well let's go and put it in our chest photos demo and let's call this chest underscore diff for diffuse save it as a psd that works and what we're going to do next is we're going to go back down to the low subdivision level and we're going to export this because some of the geometry has changed in order to fit the shape of this better so we're going to hit uh, export and we're going to call this uh, we're going to save over this chest obj file and say well, let's just call this one chest underscore lp for low poly and hit save so now i can open up 3d studio max and say file import and I can go find that chest LP file import a single mesh import a zettable poly import and I can hit alt W to grab this guy I'm gonna rotate him uh, 90 degrees up turn ang angle snap toggle on call that good uh, I'm going to hit F for front, Z to zoom, uh, and I'm actually going to move this guy up so he's about flat. And I don't know what material is applied to him right now, so I'm going to come in here, uh, create a new one, call this uh, chest, go to maps, diffuse color, and I'm going to choose bitmap. And I'm going to go find my Photoshop file right here hit OK and we're gonna apply that to our object say show in viewport and we're gonna come up here and say 100% self illuminated two-sided as well I'm gonna select my mesh and apply a normal modifier to it twice Collapse all, yes. And what I actually need to do is come in here. Uh, I need to open up that Photoshop file and flip it vertically. Um, or I could do it, uh, you know, in here. But let's just go ahead. Let's actually mirror it vertically. Well, let's do it in Photoshop. Okay, so I flipped it vertically in Photoshop to match my UVs. Uh, coming back into 3D Studio Max, and if I were to come in here and hit render, uh, we can see we now have our chest um, all nicely textured uh, with all that detail that we were capturing in the photographs. Uh, and again, if we come in here and hit F4, it's going to show us our wireframe. We can change this to black. And I'm going to hit J to get rid of my selection grid. And this is how I'd go about. Um, you know, starting off and creating a game ready mesh uh, using Autodesk's uh, Photofly, or sorry, uh, 123D Catch. I'm used to calling it Photofly because that's what it used to be called. Um, and what we're going to do in the next part of this tutorial series is come in here in the bottom and finish creating this mesh, uh, closing it off, uh, adjusting these, these bottom areas that have been deformed slightly. <laughs> uh, and after that, um, we're actually going to go ahead and uh, start selecting some of these edge loops and getting rid of them and making it a game ready mesh. Uh, after that we'll then bring this the same object into an HDR environment and show you how to light this in different scenarios whether it's outside or inside um, 
or depending on what kind of output that you want. Okay, thanks. That's it for part three. Thank you for watching.